All right, subscribers, welcome back. So today we are going to be taking the Garmin Striker plus CV and transducer and actually mounting it to my kayak. So stay tuned, hope you like what I got. I'm gonna show you how I modified everything. I did a little bit of it ahead of time because uh, there were some modifications that had to be done, but I'll show you what those are um, just for ease of use so I didn't have to go out and get additional parts. So stay tuned, let's go. All right guys, so what we got here is an Ascend uh, 10T, 10 foot kayak. This is what I use. I uh, bought it at Bass Pro about a year, year and a half ago. i uh, done a few mods that you could probably see, but I'll go over all of those in another video uh, showing you what I got. Uh, hopefully coming up soon, I'm going to get this ready to go out on the water because uh, Virginia finally thawed. So we're going to start first with a, it's just a Scotty mount. I uh, got it off of Amazon, fairly cheap. I'll link the parts in the uh, description of the video. Um, real easy. Uh, I have a rail blazer, as you can see over here. Uh, not too keen on those parts. Uh, I got them because they were uh, they were at Bass Pro when I purchased the kayak, and uh, I didn't really do my research beforehand. So uh, my choice uh, <laughs> thus far using everything is definitely a Scotty mount. So you can see I already have one mounted on here. I'll show you what that's for in a little bit. Uh, but today we're going to add another one. Real simple. Just going to slide it on. You'll make sure that your, uh, your lateral with the track, slide it in there. And then literally you're just going to screw it down so it gets nice and tight. All right, so that's the first piece. That's the mounting base. That's what everything's going to go into. Next, you're going to want to add this piece, which is a universal uh, fish finder mount or universal electronics mount from Scotty. As you can see, I already have the base plate for the uh, fish finder mounted on there. I did take off the, uh, the rotating cuff that actually mounts it um, like that, but uh, to get it on. So it's a three screw pattern, as you can see, one, two, three. Now, normally this would, uh, all of these screws line up with these holes on the base plate. But as you can see, um, I was lazy and I didn't actually have all of the screws possi possible to mount it like that. Um, the fish finder kit does not come with screws to actually mount this to anything uh, unless you're mounting it to a fixed surface like a piece of wood or plastic or something like that. So if I were going to mount this directly to the hull uh, or to the top of a box or something like that, then these screws would work perfectly. Uh, but instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of, doing it the way it should be and it's actually reversed so this top screw over here should actually be over here and then these two would line up on either side of this shaft i just reversed it um putting the wider piece on the back and the narrower piece on the front so i just screwed it in with my drill so literally this is how easy scotty makes it it's mounted and it rotates 360 degrees so i can rotate it any way i want to rotate it And then you mount the base plate, clicks right into place, right? And this rotates up and down vertically, and then rotates horizontally like this. So, all right, now you put the GPS and the fish finder on. Literally clicks right into place, all right? And your fish finder is actually mounted to your kayak right now. So with that, you need to mount the transducer. So I went and picked up, and here's another one of the modifications that I did. So this is actually a Scotty transducer mount, okay? Comes with everything up to this piece right here, if you guys can see that. So this little arm comes with it. This piece comes with the fish finder, okay? Now I don't actually have the transducer mounted to this yet, um, but I will shortly. Uh, I'll show that to you guys maybe later on or in another video. So with these transducers, from what I've been reading, you need to make sure that they're out of the way of any water splash, okay? So I've decided to mount mine towards the front of my kayak. And what I'll do is I'll move you guys back a little bit. All right, so I've actually decided to mount mine right here. So it's in front of my uh, left-hand gear track right here, okay? And it puts it somewhat in front of my splash for my paddle and everything. I don't have a uh, 
uh, electric motor on this. I prefer to uh, use a paddle, um, build that upper body strength and, you know, I don't know, quieter. And then I don't get stranded in the middle of a lake when my battery runs out. So this comes in two pieces. It comes apart. So you'll see there's a button on the side right here. Press that and pull it out. And this is the piece that's actually going to mount on here. So I am not afraid of putting, <laughs> of putting screws in my kayak. Um, I have one piece back here, which is my kayak mount um, that actually, or my paddle mount that I actually screwed into it. And then my uh, cleat on the other side is actually screwed into it as well, if you guys can see that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put four standard uh, galvanized decking screws in here. It'll mount it solidly to the hull of the, the kayak, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I have, uh, these are what, uh, three-quarter inch galvanized grabber decking screws. Uh, personal favorite, uh, mostly just because I have them on hand. So all I do is I line it up to where I want it. Which is right about here. Now, word of caution. <laughs> I can't stand up on my kayak, at least not yet, because I don't have any outriggers on it. So I try to make sure that everything is as easily accessible as possible. Um, ideally, I would like to put this further forward, but once I get underway out into the water, I can't really reach the front of the, the very front of the kayak. So I've decided to put it back here. So remember I said there was a button. <clears throat> if I flip this the other way, that actually puts the button on the outside not where I want it. So I want to make sure that the button's always on the inside so that if I need to pull it out or lift it up or anything like that, um, it will allow me to do so. So. Uh-oh, battery's starting to die. Let's hope I can get this fourth screw in before the battery dies. Alright, so all four screws are in. Solid mounted. No worries there. Okay? Now, all you do with this is just like with the fish finder itself, it pops right into place. Done. Okay, now push the button, pull up on it, comes right out. So, Scotty was nice enough to send the slip disc with it. Um, that is the one thing that I've noticed about Scotty products is if it has the, the teeth, you want to make sure you buy the slip discs. I have a uh, bait board from Scotty that uh, I got for Christmas and uh, didn't come with the teeth or the slip discs for the teeth. So when you align these teeth, it, it very, very much limits the amount of movement that you can do with these. Um, you're talking probably about an eighth of an inch between these teeth and to get things level and flat. This just allows for micro adjustments. Um, so you literally loosen this and you get total range as to how you want to adjust this, okay? Now, on the side you have two wing nuts. So when you're underway, you're going to want to have this fully extended down as deep in the water as you possibly can get it. Okay? And then as you're getting into more shallow water, you're going to want to bring it up. So, or if you're lazy like me, you micro adjust it out like this all the way on a parallel. Extend this all the way out. That way you hit one screw, drop it down into the water, and then tighten one screw. Okay? and you set it in there, okay? That's all you gotta do. It's as easy as that. So, my arm is mounted, and here I'll show you guys. Let's see if I can show you guys this. All right, so, adjust it all the way out sideways like so. Now loosen these two when you're on the land, okay? And your transducer is gonna be all the way out to the side, all right? I'm gonna go through and actually mount the uh, transducer on here zip tie it on so that it moves and moves freely and everything 
so that once you go out into the water and you're in deep enough water that you can drop your transducer, loosen this, drop it all the way down into the water, you now have a transducer on, okay? Make sure you turn the nut the right way. You don't want to drop your transducer in the water and lose it forever. But when it's retracted, I can actually drop this thing all the way down and it sits about a quarter inch above the ground. So once I have my transducer on there, I'm not gonna be able to do that um, because mine sits on the ground. Uh, eventually someday I'd like to put, put it on uh, some sort of platform that lifts it up about uh, 12 inches, maybe on some wheels so that I can maneuver it around the garage. Uh, for those of you that have watched the background of uh, my videos, uh, I work in a garage, that's my workshop, that's my man space, you know, I own it. <laughs> so, um, I have to move this thing around because it is 10 feet long and I'm working in a fairly narrow spot. So, eventually one day I'll put it up on a frame. But anyways, so now we're going to get to actually putting the transducer on here. And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to connect it all together and the battery and everything and get it started. So, stay tuned. Alright guys, so what we got here is the transducer plate. Uh, for those of you guys that uh, noticed, uh, when I cut the camera off, I dry fitted it. Noticed I had my transducer pointing the wrong way, so I had to switch my plate facing backwards. So, this is the Scotty, or this is the transducer from Garmin. It literally sits just like this. Okay. And there's four screw holes. I'm about to show you guys in a second. Right there. I don't know if you guys can see them. Okay. They did provide screws for that, right? So we're just gonna mount it just like this onto the track or onto the brace, and then I'm gonna work on getting this zip tied on and fed all the way up here and then up. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you extend your arm out all the way so that when you uh, pull your your cable, it's not you know. You're not pulling on it if you tighten your, uh, your zip ties too much. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so Garmin provided a whole host of screws and uh, star nuts for it. So, oh, don't drop those. You'll never find them again. So, literally, we take a star nut and a screw. And we find the first hole. And we screw it in. So Garmin did provide um, mounting brackets for a couple different options. You can use this bracket uh, in conjunction with another piece that actually mounts it to the hull. Um, if you're mounting underneath, um, I unfortunately have to drag my kayak often because I don't have wheels for it yet. So I opted against actually being able to drag my or, uh, mount it to the hull. If you have a means of carrying it without dragging it, and you can by all means mount it to the front of the hull uh, or the bottom. Um, mine also does not have a whole lot of access points uh, to access underneath um, the top layer and the bottom layer of the hull, so I don't have the ability to mount it inside the kayak. Um, about all I have access to is this little piece right here, and it's really not, um, Conducive. Now I do have, if I got really ambitious, I could obviously put it down there, um, but I'm not that ambitious. And uh, the vehicle that I transport on um, is sometimes open, and I want to be able to remove all of the pieces and parts. Um, you know, if I stop at Dairy Queen on the way out or on the way in, and uh, so it's just the kayak sitting out there, not all of my you know, expensive electronics and fishing rods and stuff like that. 
All right, so once you get it all screwed together, that's what it should look like. Just kind of hangs out there in space, all right? And then you're gonna take your cable and zip tie it here and run it all the way up and over once you extend it all the way. Now, Garmin provides you with four zip ties um, that allow you to zip tie it to the shaft. Uh, we're going to use those zip ties uh, mostly because I forgot to bring mine out, so I don't have my zip ties with me, uh, which you would think would be should be something that I would normally keep with me. four zip ties. So first zip tie I'm going to put right down here at the base. Now this doesn't have to be pretty yet. And you want to make sure you leave a little bit of slack there so that you don't pull on it or anything like that. And you want to make sure that your, uh, your wing nut is accessible. Okay, drape it up over the top, and this is where you want to extend it out all the way to the longest point. That way when you zip tie this all together, it has enough slack that you're not messing with it while you're trying to be out on the water. Because nothing sucks more than having to fix your gear when you should be fishing. And then up at the top, I'm going to mount the other one. Now you don't want to get these too horribly tight because you do want some play in your line in case you do need to pull a little bit or uh, move move the transducer around. Uh, so when it's all said and done, you have a little loop down here to provide some movement so that you can move your transducer uh, up and down which is a manual screw, so I probably won't be doing that, but you want it flush in the water. Um, that way it sounds down and forward, right? This allows me to rotate. I don't think I'm ever gonna rotate it, so this is locked down pretty tight. And then this slides up and down, okay? Once you get it like this, you can trim off these little pieces, which I have my trusty wire cutters. And you literally just Trim off the edges. For those of you that see my other videos, I need a new pair of wire cutters because these suck. All right, so because this is way longer than what I can use in the garage because I don't have this sitting up on anything. Lock it out. And then you can see my transducers mounted. All I do, swing this back and then drop it down into the water when I'm out on the water, okay? So for right now, we're just gonna keep it locked out and up. All right, so Garmin was nice enough to send us <laughs> with your kit, this whole big old host of wire here. And I most definitely do not need this much wire. So we're gonna unspool you know, enough to touch the floor. And then from the other side, enough to get to the back of the Garmin, which for me is about, uh, about 12 inches, 12 to 18 inches. And then the rest of this is gonna get spun up just like this into zip tie again. All right. I 
drop it down. All right, we're gonna take this off. And I'm gonna show you. Garmin gives you these nice little, whatever these are called, little water, waterproof plugs. All right, so those of you that watched my other videos, you know, XCDR is transducer. Sorry, XDCR is the transducer. And then obviously power is power. So you're gonna wanna make sure that these are mounted correctly. Slide it in. And this does create a water seal, so you don't have to worry about water leaking in here. Okay, transducer is connected. Now you're gonna wanna bring over your power and your power cable. So I have my dry box, which for those of you that have been watching my videos, you saw how I built this. If you're interested in knowing how, I'll link the video in the bottom so that you can watch it. Click connects together. It's been sitting on the battery tender for about a week right now. All right, take the power cable, hook it into power. All right. And then, let's see if I can do this without having a heart attack again, because last time I hit the power button, power comes on. All right, so clear view, not touch screen. So there we go, it's picking up the transducer, it can see it. A lot of dead space out here because obviously I have it kicked out to, to air. So it's not really just seeing my leg. If I move, let's go pick up a little bit more. So not a whole lot going on down there. See, it's picking up uh, probably, you know, there's a wall about 10 feet to the side. So it's picking up a wall. There's some boxes and stuff over there. So not a whole lot of... Uh, dexterity because there's there's not a whole lot to look at so all right go back see if we can do a traditional view there you go it's not picking up anything because obviously there ain't anything for it to pick up so that is a Garmin Striker uh, 4 CV with transducer mounted to an Ascend 10T kayak so I hope you guys enjoyed all right, guys so that was how to mount a Striker 4 I'm sorry, Striker Plus 4 CV transducer to an Ascend 10T kayak. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. Hope to see you guys soon. Happy casting.